borders of Kiwani, Illinois, it's The Vinyl Exile with Jamal Wilson. Up here, it's all about the vinyl, the whole vinyl, and nothing but the vinyl, so help me God. Up here, there is no politics, no left wing, no right wing, just a 360 degree trip around that magical world that they call the spinning record. This show follows a few simple rules, okay? All the music comes from a vinyl source. The tracks are never repeated. You're only going to hear a track once. And also, none of the tracks are cleaned up or altered. The skips and the pops are intentional. And all of the shows are going to stay within the two-hour mark, give or take. Now let's enjoy some Sonic Milk from the Musical Teat. Still on day two. This is Once Upon a Time in Bethel, episode 24, part eight. And I'm Jamal Wilson. Uh, this is starting to feel like one of those like never ending telethons that you have to stay up through. <laughs> I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that because uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of it. I spent the last 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get this to work by plugging the mic in. And when my wife comes up here, she's going to probably ask me, what did I do while I was up here? And then I said, trying to get the mic plugged in to work. She's probably going to think I'm being just a smart ass when I'm not. I, every time I record an episode, it seems like I always feel like I'm starting from the beginning mentally. And I don't know if that's just due to old age or just me being a complete fucking idiot. So on that note of personal motivation, <laughs> we're still on day two on August 16th of 1969 on a Saturday at the Woodstock Festival. And tonight we are going to focus on the 3.30 p.m. to 3.55 p.m. performance of John B. Sebastian. Now, he grew up in Greenwich Village, and he threw himself into the folk scene as a teenager, recording with the Even Dozen Jug Band and playing on sessions with Bob Dylan and many of other musicians. And he founded The Loving Spoonful with uh, Zell uh, uh, Yurofsky. And um, if you do, well, if you don't know who they are, they had a huge hit called Do You Believe in Magic, which you and Summer in the City, which you've heard used in tons of movies, tons of commercials, things like that. And I'm sure if John B. Sebastian is as smart as I think he is, he never sold his, he never sold his rights to those songs because I'm sure he's making money off that. Um, the way I like to remember The Loving Spoonful is they are in, to me, what is one of the funniest films ever made um, by Woody Allen called What's Up, Tiger Lily, in which what they um, Woody Allen did is they took a Japanese spy film from the 60s and they stripped the uh, original track and they redubbed it. Um, and it's one of the funniest movies ever made, point blank. And the footage, they actually interject footage of the Loving Spoonful um, playing. So there's, I mean, one of the lyrics, I can't remember the name of that song, but the title of the song. But, I mean, I think that one of the lyrics, can, can we go fishing all the time? And it ain't fishing all the I, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to have to check the album. I, I, I checked the uh, one of their albums because I, I I always thought that was a catchy song and I never knew the name of the damn thing, but um um so he was the co-writer and writer on all their material and then he went off launching a solo career in 1968 and he wrote songs for Broadway and he continued doing session work and became a festival favorite and then he finally had a number one hit song it was called Welcome Back which was the theme for Welcome Back, Cotter, on ABC. And um, that was back in 1976, which is a song that still also gets referenced to in um, TV shows, commercials. Um, 
I, I, I don't know why I get, something tells me that it was in like an insurance commercial, like the general, you know, or like an AT&T commercial, something like that. But that's how the song gets used. And, um, and after that, he recorded it less frequently, but he still has a, uh, a live career. And he sometimes performs as an honorary uh, member of NRBQ, and he contributes to uh, soundtracks and instructional videos. Now, the interesting thing about what you're going to hear about his performance is he wasn't scheduled to perform. What it was is John Sebastian just was there. Um, and you also remember, I mean, he probably just went because he lived in New York. It was in, it was in Bethel. He could just go hang out and leave, but <laughs> you couldn't leave. Everything got so jammed up. You were stuck there. So the thing about it was, you know, and he, well, I guess he, they didn't see him as important or popular enough or maybe they did after he did this performance, to airlift him via helicopter out of the fairground. So the thing is, is that he was wandering around, just hanging out, enjoying the performances, and then somebody, one of the uh, organization, pulled him over and said, look, we got to kill some time. Could you get up on stage and perform? Here's a guitar. So that was what he did. He just walked up there with a borrowed guitar and does this performance. I mean, but could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, you're basically performing under duress because you can't leave. And the one thing that I just thought about as I was about to do this show today was, could you imagine being a person, a, a ticket holder that can't get in? You know, it's like, you paid for your ticket, but the first wave of people are preventing you from getting to the show because every single pathway to get into the place is jammed up and you can't go. And so, so in a way, I kind of feel like I'm doing this show for them, for those of you that couldn't get in. I mean, that, that would just suck. <laughs> you know, it would be like how I just bought... Um, how I just bought tickets to see Ghost <laughs> and I got to go see him in Peoria, Illinois. And so it's like, that would like be like, oh, I got, you know, you know, and I got my wife in the car and we're going there. And then all of a sudden the traffic completely comes to a dead stop, like from the next town over, you know, because I can't get in. Yeah. Well, I spent a hundred dollars for these tickets, motherfucker. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know? So I, you know, that, that goes through my head about, that, that gives a whole new meaning to a captive audience. So, enough of my talking. Let's go back to the garden. Very shortly, we'll continue with John Sebastian. But before we continue, may we ask that those of you who are standing, please be seated. Those of you who are again taking residence on the tower, please again, for those who are behind you, may we ask you to come down. An exciting set is understandable. Now, please, if you will, return to the ground. Those of you who have sleeping bags on this tower that can get to them, would you be kind enough as to take them down, put them underneath or roll them up in the bottom corner so that those behind those bags can see, please. Sherry Urch. Sherry Urch, please, there's been a family emergency. Would you please call home? Sherry Urch. Please, there's been a family emergency. Will you please call home? Once again, there isn't a great deal of concern for the structural safety of those towers, but we are more concerned about those behind you who cannot see. Please, if you will, come down. 
Louis Pitnick. Louis Pitnick, your brother is in the Fallsburg police station. Uh, this, to my knowledge, is one of the very few, which I think uh, we could think about uh, next time we confront them. Louis Pitnick, would you please call the Fallsburg police station? 434-4422. 434-4422. A brief word about uh, the photographers using the pit. Thank you for those of you who are not connected immediately with the film crew for staying on that other location. It is appreciated. Alan and Willa. Alan and Willa, Barry is sick and needs your help, please, at the information, <laughs> information booth at 6 o'clock. Alan and Willa, to the information booth or the field behind, please, to find Barry at 6. Helen Savage, please call your father at the Motel Glory in Woodridge. Helen Savage, please call your father at the Motel Glory in Woodridge. John Angarosa. John Angarosa, Ray is sick in your car and must go home. Please meet Paul at the fence behind the stage. There's a serious illness, please. Gary Calvino. Gary... Excuse me, Gary Calvino, report to the information booth, please. Your mother is ill. Please, Gary Calvino. Kelly Erdman. Cully Erdman, your brother needs you now, please, at the ticket booth. Sue Ackerson and Mary Clark, please meet Derry Erickson at the main gate immediately. Anyone needing medical treatment in White Lake, please see Dr. Dombeck. Dr. Dombeck. The Brown House net next to the Sitco station on 17B in White Lake. Anyone needing medical treatment in White Lake, please see Dr. Dombeck. His office is the Brown House next to the Sitco station on 17B. Lewis Pitnick again, please. Call home. Very important. Richard Casey, call home. Sandy Desernook. Sandy Deresnook, excuse me. Call home right away. Richard Casey, please call home. Frank Chazen, go to the information desk or the field behind, please, right away. Those of you still on those towers, I don't, I don't really know how to approach you. But if you would be kind enough as to assist those behind you, I think we're all generally here for the same purpose. Please come down. John and Sally Cooper. John and Sally Cooper, please come to the information counter immediately or the field beyond. Your child is ill. Danny Good, Pete has your medicine. Please meet him at the entrance by the bridge. June Russell, please come to the front of the stage. Bring your sister her medicine now. It is urgent. June Russell, please come to the front of the stage. Bring your sister her medicine, please. It's urgent. Mark, please meet Scotty at the information booth. His sister is very ill. Mark, please meet Scotty at the information booth. Kathy Sunderbird, Tony needs the insulin at the front gate, please, by 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, Kathy Thunderbird, Tony needs the insulin. Eli Shaphaw. Eli Shaphaw, come to the front of the stage, please, with the asthma pill. Frank Ribba, please meet Lee Mentry at the entrance of the hog farm by the welcome sign. Insulin, important, please. Iris Davinsky, please meet your brother Paul at the information booth at 6 p.m. Urgent. 6 p.m., Iris Davinsky, please meet your brother Paul. Carol Masters, please come to the medical tent to meet Helen, please. Carol Masters, please come to the medical tent to meet Helen. 
Marilyn Lynch, come to the right-hand side of the stage, please. It's a family emergency. Please meet Julie. June Russell, please come to, her, to meet her sister at the front of the stage, please. Arnie Lichten, or Charlie her, her Damien. Please meet Jay at the information booth, in the information booth, please. I'm sorry for the delay, but I really feel as though it's necessary to go through these that we feel are important. If a, you will bear with us, please. Another thing of great importance. The road, Heard Road, as you face the stage on your left, is one of the only means of gaining access for food trucks, beverage, etc., and our water supply to come to the field. Uh, we are still promised the fire engines or the pumpers. I'm sorry again for their delay. Our traffic problems are immense. Please, those of you who are parked or have any vehicles on the side of the road, at Heard Road, can you please move them further off the road? Those of you who are walking, please walk off the road, please. It is important that we have that passageway free for emergency or b food purposes, please. Wheat Germ, Holly has your bag with your medicine. Please meet at the information booth as soon as you can, please. Barry Zutkin, please come to the stage. Linda or Deborah, go to the information booth, please. Dan has lost his medicine. Mark Jane Harvey, heck, please meet Jonathan at the information booth immediately. At the telephone booths, please, to the left of the information, at the telephone booths, left of the information, anyone, anyone who has lost or needs to find someone or has been separated from the party with which they came, please go there at 7 o'clock. We have a break at that time. Please go at 7 o'clock to that area, to the left of the information booth where the telephones are to meet those people. Please, we must keep these messages to a minimum. Tim or John, bring Kay's contact lenses to the information booth, please. There's a little note on the bottom that says, I can't see, and it's signed K. Gene Rizzo, Dick Ray is looking for you. Please bring the medicine immediately. 5 p.m. at the information booth, which is now. Jack Little of Tanawanda, come to the front by the right-hand speakers. Family emergency, please, to the right-hand speaker column on the front of the stage. With Tom Delaney or friends, please meet Dan Lynch at the first aid station. It's important. That will be the yellow tent, please. June Russell, Lucy McQueen, meet Barbara and Elise at the hospital tent at 6.30, please. Thomas David Ricky, meet Jeff Kahn at the information booth, please. Lewis Pitnick, come to the back cage security gate, please. We've already asked you to come uh, to call home. Please again, Lewis Pitnick. Again, we have no security, no employees, none of us that are working with us originally, as it were, working on the clearing of that road, which is Heard Road. We're going to have to, again, turn it over to you. Please, those of you who are in that area, aid us clear that road, please. Those of you who are in the area of Heard Road where the buses are parked, please make sure that there is adequate passage for trucks and other vehicles. John Wetzel. John Wetzel, please. Meet Paul at the information booth. Six, your sister was in a car accident. Tom Lynn, please bring Larry 
Shays as appeals to the front of the stage. Marilyn Hecht and Stacy and Andriatus. Your father has brought the medicine to the information booth. He says he will wait there. Please, Marilyn Hecht. That'll come in all due time. Terry Burns, please call, please bring Chris Mullins' car, car keys to the information booth, please, right away. Joe Vernaza, Joe Vernaza, bring the medication to the right-hand side of the stage for Jim, please, right away. Pat Welch, Rich Jennings, your allergy pills at the front of the stage, please. Reggie, meet Carol on the left-hand side of the stage, please. It is important. Tom and Bill, look for Maggie. Come to the backstage trailer to contact Bob Lewis, please. Tom and Bill of, correction, Look Magazine. <laughs> please come to the backstage trailer to contact Bob Lewis of ABC. The pink and white tents on your left as you face the stage, please, once again, are the first points for those of you who have any lacerations, cuts, whatever. Again, if I may, to your right as you face the stage, cannot walk on those water pipes. They're not made for that, they'll split, and then we'll have no water at all. Please help us in that. Virginia Cannery, Virginia Cannery, please come to the legal aid, emergency, please. Pat Quinn, meet Mike and John at the cigarette booth now, please. There's been an accident. Please hurry. Will the people from Milwaukee? Will the people from Milwaukee 14 Resistance Community go to Mark's car in the press parking lot now? Uh, it, it always comes as a problem. Could you use your um, willpower or whatever we may call it at this time to aid us in what we're trying to do? There's seven of you on the scaffolding. We'd like to wait for you now, please. Please let us call your attention again to the clearing of Heard Road, an absolute necessity. The water pipes on stage left are as you face the stage on your right. Please, if you will, don't walk on them. Those of you standing in front of the scaffolding, if, if it's convenient, please, if you could sit also, then of course the people directly behind you would be able to see. The tent downstage center that's remained up all day, uh, if you care about the people behind you, also, if you would, please take that down. The sun will very shortly be down, and I don't think you'll need that cover again. Roger Kunka, please bring the pills for Kevin to center stage at 5.30, please. Carol Masters, come to the medical tent, either the pink or the yellow one up on the hill, immediately, please. Debbie Cohen, come to the medical, medical center, please. As soon as you gentlemen get straight with that scaffolding problem over on the right, we'll continue. The gentleman who's still reclining on that tower, I'm sorry to cause the rest of you that inconvenience. I, I really can't hear, nor could I understand, any explanation that you would have when I see people's faces behind you who can't hear or see. Please. I think it's a reasonable request. If it's out of reason, I trust someone will tell me. Thank you very much.
Rick Carey, West Hartford. We have your medicine behind the main gate. Please come immediately. Kevin, bring Joe's insulin. Meet at the information booth, please. Maureen Kavanaugh at the information at once, please. To the information booth at once. Jenny Martin, need the keys to the car. Mary Ann needs her medicine, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with us John Sebastian. Thank you. I don't know if you can really tell how amazing you look, but you're truly amazing. You're a whole city. And somehow you're something that an awful lot of us talked about eight and ten years ago in little living rooms. I have a song for you. How have you been, my darling children? While I have been away in the West, though you are strangers. I feel like I know you By the way that you treat me And offer to feed me And eagerly ask If I'll stay for a rest Now sit yourselves down in a pile here before me I wish I had presents for each of your smiles but I have been traveling without much to carry just a broken guitar case with tape on the side a bag and a few signs to help me get right. But here are some beads from the throat of a princess. She reigned in the years round 200 BC. Divide them and wear them And make sure to share them Cause I want you to have them In hopes that you'll be As lovely as the lady Who gave them to me And here is a strange guitar string I found on the floor of a club in Marseille It's fat for the fourth string and skinny for the third string But I kept it in hopes that I'd use it someday It's funny how people just keep things that way suitcase and 
And he says that he'd like to come here in your yard At long last his life won't be quite so hard you treat me and offer to feed me and eagerly ask if I'll stay for a rest by the way that you treat me and offer to feed me and eagerly ask if I'll stay for a rest I'd like to sing you a little tune that, that happened. Uh, I've been out in California, and uh, I've been living in this tent. I had, a, I had the tent for about four days, and I met this lady that does tie-dyeing. So she taught me how to do it, and I got some sheets, and I put them up on the inside of my tent. And it's so groovy to come here and see all you people living in tents. Cloth house is all you need if you got love, I tell you. This is a, this is a tune about, uh, about rainbows, I guess. Could I get a little bit of water out here? Is there just a little taste? Far 
far out. Far around. Far down, far up. I'd like you to hear a tune about, I guess about those discussions that I was talking about that I seem to have had in so many small circles of friends around living rooms, around pipes when uh, they weren't selling no papers on the street and we weren't walking around this beautiful green place smoking and uh, not being afraid. This is about all of us. I love you people. a dream last night What a lovely dream it was I dreamed we all were all right Happy in a land of ours Why did everybody laugh when I told them my dream I guess they all were so far from that kind of scene Feeling mean I heard a song last night What a lovely song it was I thought Hum it all night Unforgettable because All of the players were playing together And all of the heavies were light as a feather All I'll remember is a feeling tomorrow But as I recall will just follow I had a dream last night What a lovely dream it was I dreamed we all were all right Happy in a land of ours what a lovely dream it was. Okay. Oh, man, there's a half a million people, and they're all saying a hundred songs. I tell you what, I'm going to sing a song that's a kind of a, of, a, of a goodbye song. But it's not, a, it's not an all the way goodbye song. It's just uh, that uh, it's kind of like a 15 or 20 minute goodbye song because uh, cause we're all here and we're all going to stay here. We're going to stay here until let it all keep on happening, right? Stay here until it's over. of all the things we did today yeah and laugh about our funny little ways while we have a few minutes to breathe and I know that it's time I must leave Darling, be 
home soon I couldn't bear to wait an extra minute If you don't My darling, be home soon It's not just these few hours But I've been waiting since I taught For the great belief of having you to talk to And now A quarter of my life is almost past I think I come to see myself at last And I see that the time spent confused Was the time that I spent without you And I feel myself in bloom So darling, be home soon couldn't bear to wait an extra minute If you don't My darling, be home soon It's not just these few hours But I've been waiting since I taught For the great belief of having you to talk to your crazy heads against the sky try and see beyond the houses and your eyes it's okay to shoot the moon so darling be home soon I couldn't Bear to wait an extra minute If you dawdle My darling, be home soon It's not just these few hours But I've been waiting since I taught For the great relief Of having you to talk to You're all beautiful Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, John Sylvester. John. John. John Sebastian. Oh boy. This is really a mind fucker of all times, man. I've never seen anything like this, man. I mean, you know, like it was Newport, right? But they owned it. It was something else. Wow. Just love everybody all around you and, and clean up a little garbage on your way out and everything gonna be all right. Yeah, man, and, and Chip, my man Chip, man, and he's just, oh, you're doing so well, man. He says to look out for the fence, too, man. You have to look after the fence. You know, like the, the press can only, uh, can only say bad things unless there ain't no fuck-ups. And it's looking like there ain't gonna be no fuck-ups. This is gonna work. Yay, yay for you. Yay for the diggers and everybody, wow. Hey, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know how I can come much harder by, uh, right now, but I, I'll tr I'd like to sing you one little song. I'd like to sing you a song. Actually, I'd like to dedicate it to, there's a cat, and I really don't even know his name, but I remember the chip said that, uh, that uh, his old lady just had a baby. And that made me think, wow, it really is a city here. 
But this is, this is for you and your old lady, man. And, and uh, whew, that kid's going to be far out. Why must every generation think their folks are square? And no matter where their heads are, they know moms ain't there. Cause I swore when I was small that I'd remember when. I knew what's wrong with them that I was smaller than. Determined to remember all the cardinal rules Like sun showers or legal grounds for skipping school I know I have forgotten maybe one or two But I hope that I recall them all before the babies do And I know he'll have a question or two like, hey, Tom, can I go ride my Zoom that goes 200 miles an hour suspended on balloons? And can I put a droplet of this new stuff on my tongue and imagine frothing dragons while you sit and wreck your lungs? And I must be permissive understanding of the younger generation and then I'll know that all I've learned may and then I'll know that all I've learned my kid help me then I'll know that all I've learned my kid assumes And all my deepest worries must be his cartoons And still I'll try to tell him all the things I've done Relating to what he can do when he becomes a man And still he'll stick his fingers in the fan and hey, Pop, my girlfriend's only three. She's got her own video phone, and she's a taking LSD. And now that we're best friends, she wants to give a taste to me. But what's the matter, Daddy? How come you're looking mean? Could it be that you can't live up to your dreams? No, it's not true because we're doing it. I love you. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, John Sebastian. And that was John Sebastian's performance. And as you could tell, he's in just as much awe as, uh, you know, anybody, any normal person who would have been there. I mean, he's just like, whoa, I'm playing uh, half a million people in one place. You know, I wonder if, I think that was probably, I wonder if that was the biggest audience he ever had in his life. And it's just him and a guitar and he just happened to show up that day. You know, I mean, they didn't, you know, I mean, he wasn't planning. Yeah, he did a pretty good job for a guy that got told at the last minute, go up and perform. You know, and it's just like, boom, he was engaging. He, you know, was good in his performance and all that. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> um, I got to I gotta say something I fucked up earlier. Okay, this is actually episode 23, Once Upon a Time in Bethel, part 7. I was already mapping out um, episode 24 while I was trying to get everything together for this episode, and I still had 
the notes up. So that was so as I'm looking at the notes, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so, and I'm completely sober. I haven't had an edible or nothing. I mean, it's only twelve thirty-two in the afternoon while I'm doing this. Um, on that note, as we keep going, the next band that's going to be up um, on day two on August sixteenth, nineteen sixty-nine, is um, a band called the Keith Hartley Band. Now they perform from four forty-five to five thirty p.m. And they were a, a veteran of the British rock scene, which was massive, massive in the um, in the sixties. It's I'd say in the sixties and the seventies because it was basically people, artists getting R and B records from America and learning them, and they were so fascinated by it they formed their own blues bands, which ended up turning into rock bands, which ended up turning into other things. So there were tons of these. Um, these British blues bands, honestly, a lot of them are pretty good. I've never heard a bad one yet. And um, drummer Keith Hartley, and his name is spelled K-E-E-F, by the way, uh, played behind uh, Rory Storm. And um, one of the drummers that, um, um, the thing about it was, was that one year and four drummers after the Beatles poached Ringo Starr from Rory's band. So the thing about it was, was that, yeah, that was where the Beatles got Ringo Starr, was from uh, Rory Storm's band. And they um, and he also did time with uh, John Mayle in the lineup that featured the future Rolling Stone guitarist Mick Taylor and bassist John McVie. And uh, they performed the Keith Hartley Band in 1968, and uh, that band was fronted by um, guitarist singer Miller Anderson, and the group released Half Breed on Durham Records in 1969, and made their American debut at Woodstock just before the Battle of Northwest Six, also in 1969. Remember, back then, artists, in order to keep the momentum going, it wasn't it wasn't. Uh, beneath them to put out more than one album that year, you know, to keep sales going. Okay, if this one don't sell as good, at least we got the other one coming out later this year, along with constant touring. I mean, that's how you had to do it. It was basically, you know, you know, pounding the pavement as a musician. And um, they were a popular club back in the UK, and they continued with shifting lineups through the early 70s, and the Woodstock era Keith Hartley band bassist uh, Gary Thane would end up leaving this. Um, God, I'm running out of words today. Uh, uh, this lineup of the band to form Uriah Heep. Um, he had joined Uriah Heep afterwards, and Keith Hartley died in 2011. So, right about now, um, we're going to go to back. To the garden on a, on a Saturday in which we get to hear what else is going on because it's pretty interesting how for the first time before John Sebastian came on, that was the first time you heard about a police incident. Somebody was arrested. Now, whether or not that person was at the festival or start, I, I'm still trying to find out what happened. But... Um, you know, I love listening to the stage banter and directions of Chipmunk and everybody keeping everybody informed, giving them advice. I mean, you have to remember, these. this is a half a million people stuck on one, one farmland area. This is on one person's farm. And like I keep pointing out, the toilet paper in the Port of Sands already ran out. You can't really go. They're just trying to get water, simple things like water, food, and not turn this into complete chaos. And they're doing it. They're pretty successful. So the thing about this is, 
I'm literally doing this once upon a time in Bethel because America right now is so fucked up. I mean, I'm literally planning on either moving the, the dra- grabbing my wife and moving to either to Denmark, Berlin, or Portugal. Now, to me, listening to this footage shows that there was a time when we were capable of rising above adversity regardless of differences, political beliefs, ideals, stuff like that, and able to make sure something didn't go off the rails. This could have been basically what Altamont turned into, but it wasn't. So we need to get back to that. You know, and this is all Trump's fault and his little disgusting minions. So the thing about that, so so this is meant to show we can do that. You know, so... Enough of my ranting. Let's go back to the garden. After a very short while, we'll continue with Keith Hartley. Somebody may have noticed, or all of you may have noticed, our familiar colored helicopter over there. The United States Army has lent us some medical teams and giving us a hand. They're with us, man. They are not against us. They are with us. They're here to give us all a hand and help us. And for that, they deserve it. When that lands, make sure they hear you, please. Please call home. Could I have more on number one, please? Sound. Dennis Deitch. Dennis Deitch, please call your wife. Joe Cunningham. Tom has the asthma prescription. Please meet at 6 o'clock at the information booth. Ian Zadney, Ian Zadney. Lenny has your medical and your wallet. Please come to the front of the stage. Clint and Jeff, please meet Lisa, Krieger, and Wendy at the information booth. Norman, please meet Bruce at the information, a family emergency. At the information booth is a three-year-old girl, light blonde hair. Again, if I may have your attention for just one moment. At the information booth is a three-year-old girl. A three-year-old girl, we don't know her name. At the information booth is a three-year-old girl. Will the mother or father, if they're here, please, we have no other other information except that she has light, (laughs) light blonde hair. Please go to the information booth right away to pick her up. 
Again, if we may, Heard Road, which is the road to your left, must be cleared. Please, any of you that know that you have vehicles there, can I have more volume on the highs on this, please? Any of you that, that know that vehicles of yours or your friends are parked on Heard Road, which is to your left, please, we need that assistance from you to keep that road clear. Ibi Acousta, please meet Johnny Gillum at the first aid station near the telephone. Please bring the asthma pills. Eddie Oates, please bring your wife's asthma medicine to the refreshment stand right away. Jay. Leader Men, please bring Pablo's medicine to the information booth. Karen from Poughkeepsie, please meet Harold at the stand with the blood pills, urgent, 9 p.m. or after. Chris Capiche, please contact Bob Galley at the information center of family emergency, please. Chuck Krogan, Chuck Krogan, please uh, bring the asthma pills to the information booth for Franny right away, please. Jack Sherman, please go to the middle of the front hill to meet your brother Tom, please. Denny Camp, your wife is with Kevin, he's very ill. Please go to the information desk immediately. When you come to the front with a message, if you have one to bring, please, it has to be an emergency or at least equal to. Everyone's life, limb, desires always constitute an emergency. Please, if you will, sort them out to the best of your own ability and ask only for those which are very important. Clark Cook, please meet Lewis Rivera under the small walking bridge, please. From Monticello at 12, until 12 midnight, short line buses will have a route to New York. From Monticello to New York, the short line buses will have a route until 12 o'clock midnight. A name that I couldn't possibly pronounce, Rima, and the spelling is B-I-E-L-K-E-N-I-K-R-U-S. Please meet Ed at the information booth, please. Pete and Irwin, please meet Dan at six o'clock at the center of the stage, please. Gary Johnson, please bring Marty her medicine. She is at the first aid station. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with us Keith Hartley.
very much. The two tracks from an album that we have out here called Half Read. We'll do one now which is from the same LP. This is called Too Much Thinking. Yeah. 
Which is one, one, one.
Right. Thank you. We'd like to finish off with a theme called Half Free.
Commissioner Keith Hartley. All right. So that's going to be it for this episode. And in the next one, in episode 24, which is actually going to be the longest episode this show has ever done and the series is ever going to have, because in the next episode, we're going to have the incredible string band and canned heat. So, once again, don't take the brown acid. The Vinyl Exile was written, produced, and programmed by Jamal David Wilson and his vinyl collection. The website at musicdiversityprotection.com is created and managed by the irreplaceable Ann Almgren. If you ever want to contact her to have you do your website work, you could always contact your contact her at Great Graphics. That's G-R-E-A-T-G-R-A-F-I-X at Instagram. So you can always contact her there. And special thanks to Ribbon Records and Discogs for helping me get the material. And don't forget to tell your friends about the show and please leave a review. I mean, you can always contact me through Instagram and Twitter by looking up The Vinyl Exile. I've killed the Facebook page. I mean, I thought it was pointless, so I've stick with Instagram and Twitter. I prefer being reached that way. Finally, once again, thank you so much. Um, for your patience and your loyalty to my show. This is a tough new era for all of us, regardless of our, of our ideals and beliefs. Just please stay home and stay safe. Support your local businesses, wear face masks, wash your hands, and be civil and compassionate to each other and everything around you. Make sure that you protect life, protect nerd power, take care, and be seeing you. <laughs>